This is the Bulldog 3D. I'm Darren, and today we have something a little different for you. We have the Algol Laser DIY Kit Mark II with the 10 watt diode laser. First of all, we're going to start unboxing. As you can see, it's all very well packaged. The retail price is $399, but it's currently on sale at $269. This has a 400 millimeter by 435 millimeter workspace. It has the new Algo OS 2.0 operating system and runs at 12,000 millimeters per minute engraving speed with a laser accuracy of 0.01 millimeters. There is also an expansion kit that you can purchase, which makes your working area 400 millimeters by 880 millimeters. This is compatible with various different software, such as the Algo Laser app, Lightburn, and Laser Grable. You can also load images onto a USB stick, plug those into the side of the screen, and engrave straight from there. In the box, you get the rear panel assembly, the front panel assembly, right Y axis assembly left Y-axis assembly, laser goggles, power cable, power adapter, the control box, the X-axis assembly, and the 10 watt laser. As I continue to put this together in the top right hand corner of the screen, with the machine that's fully assembled, I'll start running a material calibration test. This will show the speed of millimeters per second and what percentage of power to set the laser at. For the first pass, I'm not going to use the air assist. As I'm assembling the unit, Algo Laser also kindly sent me the Air Assist unit. This will help with accuracy and much cleaner cuts and much cleaner engraving. As the millimeters per minute reduce and the output of the laser increases, you'll start to get a lot more smoke. If you're doing this indoors, please ensure you're in a well ventilated room as I can extract all of the smoke that comes out. Now that the material test is finished, we can compare the speed versus the power on how dark or light you would want your pictures and engravings to be. For the second instance, I'm going to have the air assist running so we can compare and contrast differences with and without the air assist. With the air assist, engravings and cut should be much cleaner. Once you power the laser engraver on, the large touchscreen makes it a very easy and simple process to set up, adding your machine to wireless and going through some firmware updates. Again, to help with cleaner cuts, Algo Laser also provided the honeycomb platform.
total setup time for the Algo laser was probably around two hours for me. That's mostly because I'm trying to film and read the instructions at the same time. I would say a typical setup time would be 30 minutes. With that now finished, again, we can compare and look at what the differences are with and without the air assist. As you can see, all the lines are much cleaner. Uh, they're not blurring. So I think with the air assist, you do get a much better finish. For the second print, I'm going to use the pre-installed Santa Sleigh napkin holder. This will have an engraving and will cut the material at the same time. With that now finished, let's take a look at the results. Again, we should have parts that are cut out and have been laser engraved as well. All of the cutout pieces look to be very clean all the way through, very simple to take out. As I start assembling, you can see that this will make, make a great napkin holder on a Christmas lunch. Next, I moved into Lightburn, creating a QR code. On the Elgo laser website, you can find which laser engraver you have, find the material that you're trying to cut, this will give you the speed per millimeter and the power that you will need to set your laser to. For this QR code, I'm going to both engrave and cut out the engraving. As I draw a rough square around the QR code, I can zoom in. This will help to get the accuracy that I'm looking for when it's doing the cut. With that now set, you'll be able to see in the top right hand corner, there is an image and a line. The image shows what's going to be engraved and the line is for what's going to be cut. So I need to make sure that I'm using two different settings for the image and the cut. Now that everything is set, I can start looking at how to frame this onto my material. As I'm clicking on frame, this will move the laser and show me exactly where the laser is going to engrave. Once I'm happy with the location, I can send this to the laser engraver wirelessly and then it will start engraving and cutting. With this now finished, I can show you an example of some of the rung settings, I'm trying to do a QR code. Versus the correct settings, everything looks much cleaner, much tidier. All of the lines are a lot more square and a lot more accurate. Overall, I'm really happy with this. Now I'm going to import a JPEG image into Lightburn, resize it, 
get my settings for engraving and also again to cut out the image when it's finished. Again, we can check the Algo Laser website for my laser engraver. Make sure I have the right settings for the material of wherever I want to engrave and cut. Again, I'm going to draw a square around the image because I want to cut that image out. Once I'm happy with the image and where all my cut lines are going to be, I'll send this to the laser engraver wirelessly. This then will then start engraving and eventually cut out the square. With the engraving now finished, there will be one final pass at a much slower rate to cut out that square. As you can see, that's engraved pretty marvelously and cut out. I'm really happy with these results. I can then take that same image onto a USB stick and load that straight into the Algo laser. From the touch screen, I can see where the laser engraver is going to start engraving and then move the image around on the screen. With that engraving finished, I can use the touch screen to move the laser around so that I can see what's been engraved. Now I'm going to try something a little more complex. This is a Day of the Dead skull. There'll be lots of areas where it's engraved, and lots of small cutouts. As before, I'll be checking the Algo Laser website to make sure all of my settings are correct 
to be able to engrave and to cut. There will be links in the description below for the Algo Laser, the website and all the accessories that I have. 